Welcome to the Natural Health Show with one of New England's leading natural health care specialists, Mark Mincola. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 on 95.9 WATD. He's waiting to hear from you. Welcome home, Natural Health Nation. As always, we love joining you on your Sunday evenings. We like to think we kind of brighten it up for you. Ever at the ready to give you the information much needed for your well-being. My name is Mark Mincole, of course, uh, and uh, we love doing this show for you every Sunday night. We're here to talk uh, this evening about a very interesting and perhaps somewhat controversial topic. We're going to talk about bipolar. And, uh, you know, in October, just this past uh, month, previous month, 2012, scientists at King's College, London Institute of Psychiatry, have performed one of the largest uh, genetic replication studies of bipolar affect disorder, affective disorder with uh, 28,000 subjects recruited from 30 different research centers in a remarkably vast study. And the findings that uh, a chromosome locus 3P21-1, previously associated with depression and schizophrenia, contains a common genetic risk for the bipolar gene. So what the long and short of that is, is they're now finding more and more this is the largest of these particular genetic replication studies. But there have been previous studies as well that have uh, pretty much correlated with this particular study's results. That suggests that bipolar shares the very same kind of chromosome, chromosomal uh, patterning, the same genetic patterning as schizophrenia. And the findings uh, distinguishes, the, these particular findings distinguish that the uh, heritable risk for both bipolar and schizophrenia are pretty much similar. This, thus, schizophrenia risk genes also contribute to the risk for bipolar disorder. So we're starting to find now that uh, there are a lot of correlative crossovers at the genetic replication level with many different uh, conditions and diseases. But uh, this really kind of opens up an awful lot of possibilities. We, we do want to talk to you about some of the basics regarding bipolar uh, disorder. And uh, two million Americans, as we speak, are said to suffer from bipolar disorder. Equal numbers of men and women. It is a condition uh, where sufferers vacillate back and forth dramatically uh, between periods of very good uh, versus very irritable uh, depressive mood swings. And the mood swings can be quite magnetic, quite powerful, and uh, very swift in their changes. Bipolar disease uh, begins between the ages of 15 and 25. One of the most remarkable parts of this particular story is that the United States has the highest uh, bipolar disorder rate of the 11 leading industrial nations. In a recent study that was done in 2011, our rate is 4.4 percent. The lowest was India at a rate of 0.1 percent. And uh, a very different sort of uh, set of numbers there. And I, again, they, they're finding a direct corollary between the highest and the lowest numbers in terms of the environments that uh, those numbers are taken from. In other words, what they're finding is that uh, there's a direct corollary, they believe, with a uh, breakdown of social structure as well as environment. And in those nations that are perhaps less uh, technologically advanced, in those nations that are less inclined to the decay and the breakdown of social structure, family system, etc., like in India or many uh, countries that uh, are much more inclined to still embrace the family system and the social structures that uh, they have embraced for many, many centuries, there is a markedly lower rate, a markedly lower rate of bipolar disorder, as we could just tell that uh, those numbers suggested a moment ago. The United States, the highest rate of these 11 industrial nations study from 2011, 4.4% versus India, 0.1%. And uh, once again, we're talking about 
a condition that is very much genetically rooted, as we just pointed out a few minutes ago. But again, one of the things we've often talked about on this show is genes cannot be changed, but one-tenth of one percent every 250 generations. The genetic behavior changes moment to moment. It only takes seven-tenths of a second to adapt genetic behavior based on diet, thought processes, um, environment. Again, in this case, we're talking about the breakdown of social structures as well. Uh, when people are, are raised within the context of an organized social structure that is a dependable uh, and a social structure that is grounded, family systems that are grounded, nothing like the, the United States of America is at this point in time, unfortunately, but, uh, but apparently there, there's a direct corollary there between the rate of uh, bipolar disorder and uh, social structure breakdown as well as environment. I mean, our environment has a tremendous amount to do with it as well. A lot of these third world countries and a lot of these less uh, industrial advanced nations and technologically advanced nations are still uh, eating food that has been eaten within those, those uh, social systems for many, many centuries as well. Many other foods are, for example, in India, there's a lot of legumes and beans. It's more of a vegan diet. It's less of an inflammatory diet. They're using a lot of spices, obviously, like curcumin, turmeric, etc. So their diet is uh, environmentally more friendly. And needless to say, uh, they're eating more organic uh, food. In this country, of course, we're eating a lot of genetically modified food. And even in Europe, it is against the law to sell genetically modified food. So in many places around the world, uh, they are not cursed with the state of food that unfortunately we here, we here are in the United States. So when we say environment seems to play a direct corollary based on some of these studies with regard to bipolar disease, I think it is a significant factor. We're going to get more into that in the program. But it is a condition, again, where sufferers vacillate, as we said, back and forth between good days and bad days and uh, very severe, dramatic, and swift uh, mood swings. There are three different types of bipolar disorder. There's type 1, which is uh, the one that has the at least one full mania period, uh, followed by major depressions. Type 2 has never had the experience of full mania. Instead, they experience uh, uh, sort of high energy periods, periods of uh, extremely high energy where they don't sleep well and they have insomnia, that sort of thing. And then there's a cyclothymia condition as well, which is the third type, and that's a mild form of bipolar alternative uh, between hypomania and mild depression. So we're going to talk uh, with you this evening about bipol bipolar. There's a tremendous amount of uh, remarkable studies, and there's an awful lot of information regarding what could be done about this, because in the world that we presently live in, mood stabilizers are what the order of the day are for bipolar depression. We're talking about two million sufferers that have been diagnosed and many of whom have been misdiagnosed, and we're going to talk about that as well because uh, even the, the medical world is concerned about so many bipolar uh, patients who have been poorly diagnosed or misdiagnosed as depressive patients and put on the wrong medicines, and many of them get worse. There's quite a, quite a lot of confusion and quite a lot of uh, upset around that particular issue as well. But mood stabilizers are the order of the day, and many folks have very serious issues with those mood stabilizers. But we're going to talk about some interesting alternatives that are very viable, that are safe, and that are very effective as well. So we come back from these messages. We're going to talk with you about bipolar disorder from the natural perspective. You're listening to The Natural Health Show. My name is Mark Bencola. We will be right back. Hi, this is Laura from Good Health. People want to buy what works. It's that simple. When you shop at Good Health, you'll find all natural and 100% organic products that you won't find anywhere else. We're the small guy who offers lots of choices and lots of free parking. We've got everything new this year. Specialty foods, gourmet chocolates, and fair trade coffees. Perfect any time of year. This season, try healthy gifts for the special people in your life. Maybe our spa quality super clean skincare made in the U.S., organic essential oils, or all natural cosmetics. Cosmetics. Take advantage of our amazing selection and experience our passion for sharing what we know with you and your family. See us at goodhealthnaturalfood.com. Then visit Good Health in Quincy or Hanover. Winter is coming, so be sure you're ready. Good Health has all the products you need and the everyday low prices you deserve. So see us online at goodhealthnaturalfood.com or come in and see us today. Thanks for listening. 
You know, when most people hear the word allergies, they think only of hay fever-like symptoms associated with airborne pollen, dust, and mold. But did you know that many experts estimate that between 60 and 80 million of us suffer from immune-related food allergies without even knowing it? Furthermore, food allergies often contribute to serious health problems such as autism, irritable bowel syndrome, ADD, headaches, and chronic ear infections. Now, there's an effective way to identify and eliminate both your food allergies and the troubling symptoms that they aggravate. Pelletest Medical Labs at foodallergy.com offer a full complement of clinical, environmental, and food allergy testing to help you get to the root of your allergy problems. Elatest also provides you with a comprehensive rotation diet, lifestyle booklet, and a wallet card to help you live food allergy-free and stress-free. Do you wonder if you or your loved ones are among the 60 to 80 million food allergy sufferers in America? If so, log on to Alatest Medical Labs, foodallergy.com. Talk to your doctor about ordering a food allergy test from Alatest Medical Labs today. Foodallergy.com. Make sure the food you're eating isn't what's depleting you. Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alatess Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. How do you do? Great to have you on board with us here on the Natural Health Show. Speaking of Santee Holistic Health Center, where I work, they are actually sponsoring a lecture that I'm going to be doing this coming Thursday night. So if you're kind of bored with uh, the local lack of festivities and you like a little something different to do and you know, I'd like to attend the lecture. It's going to be at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset this coming Thursday, November 8th. It'll be at uh, 7.30, I believe, or 7 o'clock, which is not. Better be there at 7. That way you're safe. <laughs> I believe it's 7 to 9, and that's going to be coming this coming Thursday, November 8th, at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset. It's entitled Anti-Aging for the Body and Mind. We're going to talk a great deal about how to preserve your chromosomal end caps. And uh, there's ways to uh, really follow a lot of the lead research these days. And uh, there's a tremendous, tremendous amount of anti-aging research. And uh, we're practicing this in the world of nutrition every day we are. And there's a great deal to be gleaned from it and a very significant set of differences that you could surely make. So we're going to share those with you this coming Thursday, November 8th at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset. And uh, if you're interested in attending our anti-aging talk, and I'd love to meet some of you folks out there, so come on down and say hi. Just give a call to the following number. Grab your pen and paper. It's 781-383. That is the Cohasset Exchange. 781-383-3393. I'll give it one more time. Grab your pen again. And the one you just dropped on the floor there. There, just pick that pen up. 781-383-3393. There's a lot of threes in there. And again, that's this coming Thursday, November 8th at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset. Also, I'd like to uh, send out some props for Donna Green and the entire Magical Moon Foundation crew. I was at the uh, second annual gala event that they produced last night, and it was a great production, a superb, superb effort. I gave a little talk, and there were some great, great people there, very inspiring. And most of us moved to tears early on, and then at the end of the night, Steve Tyler showed up and we had a lot of fun with him, and it was uh, it was just a great, great night. So uh, we were at the Barker Tavern, and so a shout out for Donna Green and the entire Magical Moon Foundation. A job well done, per usual, a job well done all year long, every year, because you guys are really, truly inspired, and you are equally inspiring. So hats off to you all. All right, we're going to take a quick call here from Steve from Norfolk. Steve, welcome. Hi, Mark. Thanks for taking my phone Pleasure. call. Pleasure. A um, quick question. I, I, my, I have a 14-year-old son that's uh, recently getting into fitness and working out at the mm -hmm. gym, which is great, uh, but his friends are telling him about creatine. Now, I'm hesitant for a 14-year-old to be really taking anything, but I was just curious on what your thoughts on creatine were or maybe supplements in general for a 14-year-old. You know, creatine is probably safer than a lot of the protein powders, I'd like to say, because an awful lot of kids, of course, in their, in their teens that are doing bodybuilding at an early time in their lives, I think run the risk of overdriving their kidneys with a lot of nitrogen. A lot of these protein powders are very difficult to break down, Steve, and uh, I'm not really fond of a 14-year-old being uh, put on a lot of supplements, period. But I think creatine is, ironically, probably one of the safer of, of the bunch. Uh, so as long as he's not pounding high concentrations of powdered protein, I'd say probably a little bit of creatine wouldn't be the worst thing. Although, 
you know, my, my choice would be to encourage him to just use more whole food-based proteins and to eat more efficiently, nutritionally speaking, cut down his carbs perhaps a little bit, not too much because he's still a young guy and needs the energy, but uh, more than anything to increase his, his food-based protein just, just by a little bit and uh, certainly to increase his water, stay hydrated, but I think we ought to keep it with real natural food and use this as an opportunity to encourage him, to excite him, to inspire him to eat better. Okay, make makes sense. Maybe hold off on any any type of supplements for a couple of years yet. Honestly, I would say yes. I'd say you know when you hit eighteen, different story. But I think fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, you're on the cusp. I'd wait it out. Yeah, that that was my take. But I appreciate the validation. Good fatherly instincts. Father knows best. Great, thank you. Take care. Have a great night. Bye bye. And that's uh, that brings us to a point that uh, the way we run business here on the Natural Health Show and have for the past twelve years is we we have our program agenda. Of course, we move right through that through the evening. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, we take a couple calls here and there. I try not to get too heavy in the calls because we have a lot of important content. I know a lot of people have gotten accustomed to making notes and to uh, grasping this very important information each and every Sunday. But we're happy to take a call or two. Whether you're on point or not, you're welcome to have a question fired off, and I'll answer you. All right. So uh, let's get back on point, actually. We're talking about bipolar disorder from a natural health perspective. It's a growing problem. Two million Americans are said to suffer from bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depression, by the way, for those of you who don't know that. And it's all about mood vacillation. And I should probably give you some of those symptoms, too. Uh, when we say mood vacillation, that is the leading symptom, that there's dramatic mood shifts and oftentimes very swift and sudden. Uh, insomnia, anxiety, restlessness, uh, depression, mood swings, of course, as we said, forgetfulness, erasing thoughts, uncontrollable temper, uh, lack of self-control, etc., etc. And as we said before the break, the mood stabilizers are the pharmaceutical mode of treatment. And uh, obviously lithium is one of the leading modes of treatment. Valporate is another one. Lamotrigine is another one. Uh, I can't remember the, the fourth one is, but uh, I'll think of it in a minute. <laughs> anyway, there are four different commonly used medicines, and uh, we also want to make sure people know that there's an awful lot of cons counseling and consulting work that usually goes along with this. An awful lot of folks with bipolar disorder uh, are also receiving a great deal of counseling treatment along the way. So it's not just medication. It's usually a combination of medication and counseling in most cases. But uh, again, I think some really important points here that um, there's an environmental connection here, as we said earlier, that uh, much of this condition is misdiagnosed. It's quite confusing, and the, the mental health world is also very confused in many cases about uh, whether or not something has a predominance of symptomatologies that correlate with one depression or another. So it's hard to really pinpoint because some of these folks with uh, bipolar seem to have all the leading signs and all the leading markers for depression. So they are indeed diagnosed with depression and uh, treated as such. And unfortunately, in many cases, not aided by that treatment, but in some cases worsened by it. So it's quite important to get the right diagnosis. That is the key point of all. Make sure you get the right diagnosis if there's any concern about this stuff. Um, also, we pointed out here that there's a genetic corollary between the chromosome, uh, the chromosomal gene locus that produces schizophrenia and depression as well as bipolar. So they're very correlative. And again, this is a huge study I talked about uh, earlier at the outset of the broadcast. Scientists at King's College in London Institute of Psychiatry have performed one of the largest ever gene replication studies of bipolar affective disorder with 28,000 uh, subjects are recruited from 30 different research centers around the world. And uh, they found a direct corollary between the genetic structuring that uh, is representative of the genetic risk for schizophrenia and depression as well as bipolar. So there's uh, distinguishing uh, heritable risk connections between these at the genetic level. So one of the things I wanted to talk about here is, again, as we said earlier again, that we can't change our genes. We surely can change the way our genes behave. 
And uh, this particular st uh, study that we talked about again, the 11 nations study of 2011, was very clear to point out that those nations that were less inclined to have social structure breakdown and less environmental interferences at a significantly lower rate, significantly lower rate of bipolar depression, bi bi bipolar disorder rather. So um, we want to make sure that we get this picture here that there are a lot of things that are extremely uh, important with regards to risk factors here for bipolar. We talk about food, that's number one. The first thing we're going to talk about is this country of ours, it's just my personal opinion that one of the reasons why we have the highest rate of bipolar disorder in the world, I can just kind of summarize it. There's one, one story I want to share with you. Um, I had a woman come up to see me probably about 10 years ago from, uh, from New York City. And she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She had been on medications. She'd been on the mood stabilizers. And in her case, they seemed to do virtually no good. She wasn't being helped by the medication. She was quite desperate. And uh, so long story short is I did some food testing with her, and I found that she was pretty good with most of her foods. 99% of her foods, not a problem. But there was one thing I clearly noticed, and that was a very severe, a very severe gluten intolerance. Now, the, the gluten and wheat intolerance that I found that she had had was producing a specific cerebral inflammation and inflammation in the brain. People don't realize that food allergies don't simply affect the gut. You know, most people think of food as a gut connection response. Not so. Uh, many people that I actually test and check, I check for a variety of different pains. I've found people over the years who were diagnosed with, with one condition or one disease or another, but when I got them to clear the inflammatory foods, the immune globulin inflammation, uh, left them without symptoms. So one person might have been diagnosed literally with MS. And I've seen these people, as well as bipolar, etc. And pulling them off the variety of inflammatory foods that did a number on their chemistry, and in this case on her brain chemistry, once eliminated, the body was free to, to resume an equilibrium, back, back to balance. So anyway, I tested her and I told her, listen, I, I can't find a lot of food intolerances, but I did find gluten and it's pretty severe. And I also added that I found that the direct hit that she was taking was cerebral inflammation. So I encouraged her to stop using it. She came up to see me about uh, 12 weeks later, and she was back to work, and she was symptom-free and feeling quite good. So one of the points I want to try to make is the foods that we're eating in this country are profoundly compromised beyond our imagination. I have so many patients when they go to Europe for two or three weeks eating the same things that they would eat here come back symptom-free after three weeks, and then they start to resume their symptoms when they come back here. Because the foods we're eating here are profoundly compromised biochemically. Profoundly compromised. The chemistry of our food is really causing a lot of havoc. And I think bipolar is one of those things. And I think that uh, the story that I told you is not an uncommon story. A very dear friend of mine whose name's Graceland Guile from Connecticut, who wrote a very exceptional book called Healing Depression and Bipolar Disorder Without Drugs. She has some remarkably inspiring stories of, of uh, folks with bipolar who, when they stopped eating the wheat, similar to the story I just told you about the woman who came up to see me from New York, uh, were scot free, symptom free, after stopping the wheat, stopping the uh, compromising foods that they had previously consumed. So I can't really emphasize this point strongly enough. Find somebody who can test you for your foods, whether it's, you know, whether it's, uh, we, we have a great sponsor, Alatest Medical Labs, if your physician can at least send you over for an IgG food allergy test, immune globulin G. If you want to run two sets of tests, you can run the IgEs and the IgGs. If you want to come see me, I'll do the, the testing method that I put together, the system that I devised. There's many different people doing great work out there. Get yourself tested, and I don't mean the little skin prick tests.
get a good comprehensive food allergy test, a good comprehensive food allergy test. And if you're suffering from bipolar, make sure you eliminate those foods that you are found to be sensitive to. Eliminate them. At least give it a month. And at the end of that month, you'll feel significantly better, I'll assure you. Also, the quality of your food. Once you eliminate the allergens and the intolerance and the inflammatory foods, that's a great beginning. Next, qualify the foods in terms of the quality of your foods. What I'm saying is organic. And again, you want to make sure that you're not just eating compromisers. Some organic foods are only 70% organic. If it says just plain organic, it can be 70% organic. If it says 100% organic or certified organic, it is 100% organic. It has to be. That's what the labeling laws are all about. The labeling laws are very strict now. So I encourage you to, number one, get your food allergies uh, scored up, tested up. Number two, shift the quality of your food to organic. Just do this experiment for one month. And I assure you, you will feel markedly better. I see it every week. So uh, go with organic. Go with the real clean stuff. Go with uh, free range. You want to go with, uh, with foods that are not fed omega-6 inflammatory pellets. And uh, free range is actually omega-3 fed. So free, free, free range poultry, free range beef, a little less of the beef because you want to keep the inflammatory foods lower. Inflammatory foods are basically dairy, red meat, egg yolks, peanuts. I've talked about that before on the show. If you want to do my one-month experiment to see if you can't improve the quality of your, of your moods and the quality of your brain functioning uh, with bipolar, you can actually do this one-month experiment trying to clean up your foods, get rid of the inflammatories, the allergenics, and the compromised foods that are genetically modified, of course which is just appalling. It's just genetic modification is... It's unconscionable, that's what it is. But anyway, we got to contend with it. It is what it is. So a hypoallergenic diet is number one. Anti-inflammatory, number two. And uh, you want to make sure, too, that uh, you get your supplements properly selected. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to tell you exactly what supplements I would recommend and why as far as uh, supporting the bipolar disorder from a natural medicine perspective. Hey, my name is Mark McCoy. You're listening to The Natural Health Show. Hey, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Mark Mincola. You know, over the past decade, The Natural Health Show has attracted many thousands of avid listeners. I'd like to extend an open invitation to all potential new sponsors to join our Natural Health Show family. If you own a heart smart lighter fare or seafood restaurant, a fitness or day spa, or if you're an allied health professional or coach, The Natural Health Show is the perfect place for you to make the direct connection with your demographic target. If you really want to zero in and aim the message of your vision directly at those who want to most know about it, join the Natural Health Show family of sponsors. I promise you'll be glad you did. For information, call Candida at 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. With the burgeoning growth of the Natural Health Show, now's the perfect time to share in that growth together. Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alatess Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. All righty, welcome back. And for those folks who are used to uh, observing on Facebook, Apologies. I, uh, that's going to be that stuff's going to be up for a use stream and Facebook a little later in the week. So we're just doing live YouTube. Actually, it's not going to be live YouTube either. It's going to be YouTube, use stream, Facebook as the week unloads. So you'll be able to see it on my uh, on my, on my website or my Facebook page. Incidentally, my website, if you want to check it out, has a lot of good information. It's at maxhealing.com. That's one word: M A X Max Healing. Dot com. Um, also want to remind you again that uh, this coming Thursday, which is November 8th, hard to believe it's November already flying by. Where, where did 2012 go, Tim? zippity doo da. Anyway, this coming Thursday, November 8th, at the Red Lion Inn in lovely downtown Metropolitan Cohasset. And uh, it's going to be a talk that I'm going to be doing this uh, Thursday on anti-aging for the body and mind. 
And uh, if you're interested in finding out how to preserve and protect your mind and your body, and uh, let me tell you, that's uh, of the utmost importance these days because you get you take 30,000. That's sorry, that's exactly right. Count those now. 30,000 DNA assaults are bestowed upon you every day. So every day your, bo your body and your mind are taking 30,000 DNA hits from mutations. 30,000. It's like an asteroid field. But uh, somehow, for the most part, we make it through without too much damage. But what we want to do is share with you how you can make it through cleanly, far more protectedly than you're presently uh, experiencing. So we're going to show you the, the art of doing that with nutritional therapy. And uh, that's coming this coming Thursday, November 8th. So join us if you want to give a call at 781-383-3393. Uh, All right. We look, to, look forward to seeing you down there. And one of the things I wanted to mention, too, is Dr. Carl Pfeiffer, P-F-E-I-F-F-E-R, Dr. Carl Pfeiffer, who is one of my uh, great, great uh, inspirations. He was a great researcher who is no longer with us, but... Uh, I studied his work over the years from the Princeton Bio Brain Center. One of my very favorite books is a book called Mental and Elemental Nutrients. Mental and Elemental Nutrients by Dr. Carl Pfeiffer from Princeton. And uh, again, he headed up the most remarkable orthomolecular brain program at the Princeton Bio Brain Center for years and uh, had a remarkably effective rate of dealing with schizophrenia and dealing with uh, a number of different mental conditions and depressions and anxieties and cerebral inflammations and uh, manic depression, which is, of course, now bipolar. And uh, his research was breakthrough research. His treatment work was astoundingly successful. And uh, you'll find a lot of that in his book, Mental and Elemental Nutrients. Dr. Carl Pfeiffer, P-F-E-I-F-F-E-R. And uh, his bio-brain center, of course, is no longer in place, but the Pfeiffer Treatment Centers, plural, uh, still carry on. There's, there's a Pfeiffer Treatment Center in Illinois, Minnesota, uh, Arizona, California, and the nearest is in Maryland. So if you, anybody's interested in natural treatment for, for bipolar, and if you've really been uh, suffering a great deal from this condition and really need some natural medicine help that is well supervised, well studied, well examined, and well tested. And what you want to do is you want to contact the Pfeiffer Treatment Center in Maryland, P-F-E-I-F-F-E-R, Pfeiffer Treatment Center in Maryland. They do some astounding work there. And uh, what they've found is that vitamin B6, zinc, vitamin B12, and the methyl form are very, very helpful for these problems. They found that there's elevated copper levels, and that's the next thing that I wanted to talk about is if you have the wherewithal to have a mineral test, a trace element test, they're called TEIs, trace element test, you might think of them as hair analysis because there are seven layers of protein in hair, nails. Okay, you can take either the nails or the hair. We do these. We do about 3,000 of these things a year. But what we find out is we find out exactly what your mineral levels are because your hair and your nails have seven layers of protein. The third innermost layer is called the carotene level. It's a cortex, and it's about 58% carbon, which means that it's a carbon repository. It stores and tells the story of what you are storing. So it gives a full account of what your mineral bases are, including your toxic mineral bases. So things like copper, mercury, aluminum, lead, beryllium, etc. These are going to show up. They uh, actually take at the lab, we, we take your hair, we take your nails, we send them to the lab down in Texas, and they refract atomic light through your protein. And then we get a complete spread that tells us exactly what your ratios and what your numbers of lead, mercury, and all that stuff are. It's remarkable, and it's extremely telling. And it's a great tool that has really enabled me to help so many people over the years. It's a great, great nutrition tool. It's called a trace element test, TEI. Trace element, in, tra trace element Incorporated is the company that we work with, but it's a trace element test. And again, what we find out is if your copper levels are exceedingly high, if your mercury levels are exceedingly high, 
They're playing a significant role in the neurological centers of the brain. They're inflaming the neurological centers of the brain. One of the ways that we like to offset that is by antagonizing these toxic metals with vitamin B6, zinc, vitamin B12. And again, Pfeiffer found that out years ago. So between his research, which is wonderfully, which is a wonderful guideline, and then the test results that we get back from your trace element test, we can help you make great, great headway at eliminating the causal root. Now hear, hear what I'm about to say. Here, listen closely, gather close to your radio. It's not about treating the symptoms. It's about getting to the root. Okay, we don't want to just camouflage the treatment. There's a reason why things happen. In the case of the woman that I talked about earlier, by getting this woman to stop eating the inflammatory wheat that was causing her cerebral allergy, she improved her condition. And in many cases, I've seen people over the years by discovering the high levels of mercury, the high levels of lead, the high levels of copper, in most cases, it's more copper and aluminum with, with the case, in the case of uh, bipolar. But by discovering the copper and the aluminum and then eradicating it by antagonizing with vitamin B6 and zinc, among other things, we also use some homeopathic cuprum and uh, aluminium, and we use those things in homeopathic form. The alumina helps a great deal. The cuprum helps a great deal. The B6 helps a great deal. B12 and zinc. And then we retest in four to six months and look at the levels have gone way down. And along with that, that's usually paralleling an improvement in brain function and symptomatology. So people feel better as those levels balance out. Big surprise. So number one, clean up those foods like we said. Number two, Get yourself a hair analysis. If you want to contact us, you can do that. Go to, go to my website. And again, my website is maxhealing.com. One word, M-A-X, maxhealing.com. If you want to learn more about that stuff, or give us a call at our office, and we'll, we'll talk to you more about that. Also, you know, there's a great deal of adrenal insufficiency when, we, when it comes to bipolar disorder. The adrenal glands are the stress glands, so it would make perfect sense that there's a significant imbalance there. We talked about earlier the 11 nations study that found that there's a direct corollary between the nations that have a breakdown in social structures, the lack of family connection, etc., playing a significant role in the corollary between the, the, uh, the, the numbers of people that are uh, suffering from bipolar versus the nations that have less people suffering. So those, again, those nations that have a greater social structure in place, more consistent family systems are being, uh, still being uh, engaged. Uh, people can rely upon that stability, that reassurance. Uh, there's a lower rate, a significantly lower rate of bipolar. So the stress that we're experiencing in the United States, our stress levels are unparalleled. I don't know if any of you have traveled around the world a little bit. I'm sure many of you have. I certainly have a little bit. And you know, when you go to Europe, you just can't help but notice that people are just not nearly as stressed out. Anywhere, I, anywhere I've ever gone around the world, uh, as opposed to here, there's nothing quite like it. In fact, there's nothing quite like the Northeast. You go to the West Coast, I mean, I've driven cross-country two or three different times and really sort of taken in the country a lot and the, the sort of the mood, the attitude, the energy of the country is so... The minute you come back toward, uh, it's, I always said, the minute you hit Pennsylvania, you start to feel something. There's like this haze of stress and tension and energy field. The minute you get to the Northeast, bang, there it is. You know, so we are definitely a highly, highly stressed part of the world. And it has an effect on things like uh, our moods, our bipolar response, etc. So I say that one of the most important things we can do is really improve our brain function with support with the support of natural supplements. So one of the ones I recommend is DHA, docosahexanoic acid. Everybody knows about the omega threes and the fish oil caps. There's two major uh, lipids in there. There's two major fats in your fish oils: EPAs and DHAs. I always tell everybody that the EPAs are for the heart, and the DHAs are for the brain. So you want to make sure you're taking a good stiff dose of DHAs. I'd say 500 milligrams twice a day. And there have been some remarkable studies correlating improvement of 
bipolar symptoms with high, high doses of DHA, 500 milligrams of DHA twice a day. Also, uh, I recommend passion flower for sleep because one of the common denominators of bipolar symptoms, very poor sleep. The adrenal glands never get to recover. The adrenals go through three different phases of responsiveness. They go through alarm, resistance, and recovery. And if your adrenals are stuck in alarm phase, they never get to recover. And if they don't get to recover, you get stuck in bipolar. So I always tell people your symptoms are only stuck in place because your adrenals are stuck in place. You remain in a stress, in a stress cycle. So one of the most important ways that Mother Nature provided for us to break out of our stress cycles is 7.5 hours of REM sleep. If you go through all seven stages of your REM sleep, it's one of the most powerful ways to actually recover your adrenal glands. That is Mother Nature's way of putting the car in the garage, turning off the engine, and letting it cool down. Unfortunately, most of us uh, are tantamount to bringing the car in the garage, putting a brick in the accelerator, and leaving the car on. <laughs> That's kind of what happens to our adrenals, unfortunately. So get that good quality recovery. Get seven hours of REM sleep. The best way to do that that I know of is passion flower. Passion flower. I like the passion flower drops. You might try the quantum brand passion flower drops. I tell people take 30 drops, put it in an ounce or two of water before bed at night. Make another little cocktail, another ounce or two of water with another 30 drops. Put it by the bed stand in case you only get about four or five hours and you need to uh, reboot in the middle of the night. So if you need to, uh, to uh, get up and use the facilities in the middle of the night and you're having a hard time getting back to sleep, you got your, you got your second dose. So that's 30 drops of passion flower once or twice in the evening. Very, very important. Here we're going to take a call. We've got Bill on the line from Arlington. Welcome, Bill. Dr. McCullough, good to talk to you again. Good to hear your voice. I have a, two questions tonight. The first is about the, um, the Ornish and Caldwell Eselton di uh, heart reversal diet, when, yeah. as in when you have clogged arteries, minor angina, and you're trying to open the arteries up. <clears throat> I read both these books cover to cover in the last week, and they both talk about a total vegan, plant-strong diet, nothing from animals. But both of these fellows uh, suggest that you have no nuts, no seeds, no oil, even from avocado. Any oils you get is strictly from cooking rice or whatever, you know, small amounts of oil. So, you know, I read that and I said, well, if that's what works, that's what works. But then in other sources that I read, like Dr. Christopher said, absolutely add oils, as in nuts, seeds, and avocado. And a third source says, if you're insulin resistant, which I am, you definitely want to go to more of a paleo diet where you occasionally have you know, grass-fed meat and fish. This is a very confusing state of affairs to somebody trying to make you know, serious decisions about a direction going forward. There's, there's a reason for that, though. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this matter. Well, there's a reason for that. I think, you know, the, the, unfortunately, it's not a one-size-fits-all world here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're dealing with very complex differentials in chemistry. Mm. So it sounds like a really good generic idea just to kind of not eat a lot of uh, fatty avocados and oils. And uh, one person would put you on a vegan diet, another person would put you on a fish diet and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, again, there constitutionally are many, many different genetic types, and there's many different constitutional types, many different chemistries out there. There's many different metabolic, there's up to 14 different metabolic types. So we can't all eat or drink the same way and get the same results. I mean, I just had a gentleman in my office this past week who ate virtually nothing and was still 315 pounds. And I mean, he really wasn't eating a whole lot. But what he was eating was unfortunately working against him. I actually increased his calories, but changed the format of what he was eating, and he will significantly drop his weight. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, if somebody has metabolic syndrome... That is my... Yes, I definitely uh, have metabolic syndrome here, with insulin resistance. Here, here's the most important thing. I'll simplify it. Foods only break down into three categories, Bill. Fats, proteins, and carbs. And it's important to know which of these three your body isn't good at. So if you can find somebody who's a nutritionist or somebody who can help you professionally or a good book that can help you tune into 
the ways that you can decide and decipher which of the three you're not good at or combinations of the three. Some people are not good at two of the three or some people are not good at all three of the three. Generally, people struggle with one of the three. Metabolic syndrome are people that don't do, they don't break down carbs. Yeah, I, I don't do well with carbs. Like so, so the reason for the confusion is you got three groups of foods and, and millions of people. And we got to make the connection between each one of these people determining which of the three foods they're doing poorly with so, so we can eliminate with it. With the right diagnosis, you could, even, you could even be a person with heart disease and clogged arteries and still reverse it even using a great diet that might include grass-fed meat and, and fish. It happens, it happens every day, of course. Absolutely true. I see. So it so really, you, it really comes it, down to you one. You can determine that in a meeting in your office when you, you know, do the blood tests or whatever you do with your patient. I've been doing that for 30 years. Okay, I got it. My, 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 uh, thank you, that's great. My second question is regarding blood pressure. Do you have any thoughts on helping to control a uh, modestly high blood pressure in the 150 to 100 range um, in terms of what might help besides losing 50 pounds? Well, once again, it determine, you have to determine what's causing the blood pressure elevation. Sometimes mm -hmm. blood pressure is more rooted in the kidneys, sometimes more liver and it's labile, sometimes it's up and down and up and down. That's more liver-based, it's labile. If it's more inflammatory from the kidney perspective, you've got to be careful about proteins and sodium and calcium. Uh, you also have to think in terms of uh, angiotensin renin or adrenal response if people are just really very sensitive adrenally and that adrenaline kind of runs on them every now and then. We call that running fire. Uh, then you want to be careful about that with uh, probably the best thing to do is the C9 peptide. There's something called C9 peptide and there's also a C12 peptide. So there's two different groups of medicines out there. Uh, one is actually called peptide ACE, P-E-P-T-I-D-A-C-E, -E, peptide ACE. Mm -hmm. And that's Dr. Michael Murray's product, and that's from the little bonita fish. They extract the peptides, the little proteins from these bonita fish, mm -hmm. and they help the adrenal factor that drives up those angiotensin. So that, might, that might help one of the ingredients with blood pressure. Yes. Others. Yeah, and I'd recommend that. That's the one I'd recommend. So Dr. Michael Murray's ACE, ACE peptides, AC, ACE peptides. Ace peptides. Those are 500 milligrams. I'd recommend three a day. Spread them out. Okay. Listen, thank you. I, I, I hear you loud and clear. It's, it's, it's a complex question in terms of these. Well, in America, never deals with anything complex. They always just kind of simplify it and make a buck. By the way, today was the day at the American Heart Association at 3.30 L.A. time that the 12-year study on collation was supposedly announced in terms of all the results that have come in from a multi-gazillion dollar, 12-year, long, long study. It's been very intriguing to see what how that turned out. I've seen so many people aided by chelation therapy. It's not even funny. Yeah, I have too. Listen, thank you very much. Thank you appreciate it. Huge help. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Thank you. We're going to take a short little break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Are you one of the 20 million Americans suffering from neuropathy, shingles, or chronic nerve pain? In the last three years, many people have discovered excellent and affordable treatment for diabetic, post-chemotherapy, and other types of neuropathy and chronic pain. Dr. John Hayes, chiropractic physician since 1981 on Route 53 in Norwell, has had such astounding results with his unique neuropathy program that he's now teaching his remarkable system to doctors around the country. His most recent book entitled Beating Neuropathy remains a bestseller. In fact, Dr. John Hayes is the world's exclusive educator and trainer for Rebuilder Medical Technologies. Call Dr. Hayes' office 24-7 to schedule a free neuropathy analysis. Call 781-659-7989. That's 781-659-7989. Call now while free neuropathy analysis slots are open. Back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alates Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. All righty, welcome back. So just to uh, review here a couple things, we want to make sure that those folks uh, who would like to take a natural tack as far as uh, trying to help themselves from uh, the bipolar disorder condition, we want to make sure they get these uh, real important points. Food allergy testing was number one. Please do that because... As we've said many times here on this broadcast, the inflammation that comes from the food uh, is capable of triggering problems far beyond the gut. 
please get that message because I've had so many folks over the years with virtually any condition you can think of. Uh, in fact, there's um, a documentary that I did called Choosing to Live, which is very, very much. It's about a 40-minute documentary. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. But you, there's other titles. Uh, there's other other authors of the title Choosing to Live. So if you go to YouTube, check out Choosing to Live, Mark Mincola. It's two L's. Don't forget that part. Um, and you'll see an interesting uh, documentary about uh, many of the patients that I've worked with who had MS, uh, cirrhosis of the liver, cancer, etc., who have had complete and total recoveries as a result of eliminating problem foods. So, I mean, this is my life. I know that it's uh, I'm a voice in the wilderness. I realize that because there's an awful lot of noise out there about what to eat and, and all that other business. But I'm just telling you, from my little corner of the world, it's a very rare rarefied perspective, believe me, but uh, I've seen what I've seen, and I've seen it thousands of times, so I want you to think about that in regards to your bipolar as well, if you're suffering from bipolar, that eliminating the problem foods, number one, so food allergy testing is numero uno recommendation, number two, you want to make sure that you have a, an avoidance diet, because once you find out that you're allergic to wheat or eggs or whatever it might be, you must take at least a month, as I said earlier, to avoid those things and really give yourself some time to recapitulate and to uh, rebalance yourself. Number three, I say a hair analysis or a mineral test, some form of mineral test, because I find a lot of mercury, a lot of toxic metals such as copper are very definitely implicated with a lot of depressions, a lot of bipolar, etc. So again, you want to find out what's in there, what's in your body that you don't know about. If you have questions about that, just uh, go to my website. It's maxhealing.com. <clears throat> we'll try to give you all the information we can about that. Number number four, you want to make sure that you chelate or pull out. You heard Bill just mention the word chelation a minute ago. If there's poison in there that's causing trouble, you got to get it out. Chelation is the way we do that. So uh, there are some wonderful chelating agents like vitamin B6, vitamin zinc, or zinc rather, vitamin B12 in the methyl form. These are great chelating agents that will pull these uh, toxic copper elements out of your system and also homeopathic uh, elements. Whatever the, whatever the elevation of toxic metals are, you can use the, the opposite homeopathic. In other words, if you have mercury, you can use homeopathic mercury, okay? If you have copper, you can use homeopathic copper. So it's homeopathy. The word homeopathy means like treating like. It's like snake venom. So if you have elevated levels of uh, aluminum, you can use homeopathic aluminum. So whatever your elevated uh, metals are, whatever your toxic metal elevations are, you want to get the very same form of, of uh, homeopathic medicine. All right? So that's uh, really important news. That's the chelation process. And uh, number five, my recommendation is to make sure that we are supporting your sleep because sleep is representative of adrenal recovery. And the adrenals go through three different phases, alarm, resistance, and recovery. That's one, two, three. So when you think about what stress is biochemically and how it can really upset you and make your conditions worse, and especially as we keep talking about this 11-nation study that clearly points out, it clearly points out that there are, there's a distinct differentiation. Those nations that are the most stressed, Again, they have the, the most social structure deterioration or breakdown significantly, four to five times higher bipolar levels, or numbers, I should say. So incidences are significantly higher where there's a higher amount of stress. So recovery from stress becomes extremely, extremely important to recovery from bipolar. All right? And um, <clears throat> that means that Sleep is essential, seven and a half hours of REM sleep. So passion flower is about the best way I can think about to uh, recommend a, a solution for good night's sleep. And the last thing I wanted to say here this evening is the medicine that is used, the mood stabilizer that the pharmaceutical world uses to treat bipolar is lithium. It's lithium carbonate. Once again, for folks that are really nervous about well, natural medicine isn't strong enough or whatever. Homeopathy makes lithium carbonate. So there's a homeopathic form of lithium carbonate. It's called lithium carbonicum. C-A-R-B-O-N-I-C-U-M. Lithium carbonicum. I 
often say that whatever they have in the world of pharmaceutical medicine, we've got an answer for it in the world of natural medicine. It's just that most folks don't know what the answer is. Trust me, there are literally millions of natural medicines. It's a, just a remarkable study unto itself. You devote a lifetime, as I have, to studying natural medicine, and there's still another million you don't even know about. So believe me when I tell you there's some really safe, effective, reliable medicines out there, but where you think in terms of the moods, the primary mood stabilizer used by the, uh, the American Medical Association for uh, bipolar d disorder. You're talking about lithium as the primary mood stabilizer, but again, homeopathy has a form of lithium carbonate called lithium carbonicum. If somebody was ever going to try that, I'd recommend the, the potency of 30C. Homeopathic has many, uh, many different potencies, so... The one I'd recommend for this particular condition is lithium carbonicum 30C. That'd be three pellets under the tongue three times a day. And uh, that's really, really important. You know, and there's some peripheral information as well, too. There have been studies about aerobic exercise being extremely important, and I do believe that's true for virtually anything. So I say 40 minutes of aerobic exercise three to four times per week. 40 minutes. It doesn't take anything more than a brisk walk. Being outdoors absorbing whatever beautiful oxygen is still left out there in beautiful sunlight. Aerobic exercise, 40 minutes, three to four times a week, is super importante. And it helps us to balance out those adrenal hormones that we kept talking about a moment ago. Tim, you didn't know I spoke Spanish, did you? No. <laughs> it's muy importante. I speak a little Italian, too. I'll, I'll lay that on you some other night. Anyway. All right, so we want to make sure that you... Uh, have all this this stuff wrapped up somewhere in your notes and uh, make sure you're clear about it anybody has questions too i always say that I answer emails all week long I answer about 300 emails throughout the week somehow some way i get to most of those believe it or not but you could get to our website if you got a question fire it off and i'll try to see if i can't provide an answer for you that's maxhealing.com there's a great line about service i'm in service and as gandhi said he who hands the rose maintains the fragrance in his hand. So that's what I think about service, and that's why I'm in that business of serving you and helping every way that I can. So fire those questions. I'll make sure we get them to you. All right. This hour goes by really quickly. I'd like to thank my producer, Tim McKinney, per usual, steering the ship right down the middle of the aisle here. I'd like to thank Ed Perry. I'd like to thank you all for listening each and every Sunday night. We'll be back next Sunday at 8 o'clock. Until then... This is Mark Minkoller reminding you all, please, be wise, be aware, be well, make it a healthy week. Good night.